With the consecration, um, it's really a time of preparation. So St. Louis Marie de Montfort put together 33 days of preparation and uh, for you to make your consecration. And so it's a beautiful preparation. St. Maximilian Kolbe, he has a preparation as well. So these are two great saints. And then there's even uh, some Marian friars online that actually now have a nine day preparation and they have talks for each of the days. And so, you know, it's not saying that it always has to be 30 days, 33 days, or any number. I know when I first exactly. made... Exactly, we can't get really, you know, right. so When I first made everything. my consecration, I had heard about it and actually, you know, heard that I was called to, you know, give my whole life to Mary. And so what I did, because I grew up Catholic and I knew of Mary as a statue, so I didn't have a problem with her. You know, I actually was touched through Medjugorje because I heard one of Mary's reported messages. She said, um, abandon yourself totally to me and I will lead you in God's perfect will. And I, I had no clue what God's perfect will was for my life. So that's when I simply said, well, mother, I give you my life. And of course the saints say, when you consecrate your lives to Mary, it's like life in the fast lane to God. And they also say the whole purpose of consecration to Mary is to live wholeheartedly our baptismal vows, which is intimate union with the indwelling presence of the Holy Trinity who dwell within us through baptism. So Mary, who is in this profound communion with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, she draws us to this ever deeper communion by helping us to dispose our hearts, like her heart is immaculate. It's so open and receptive with every fiber of her being. And she, so she gradually draws us to open those rooms and areas in our hearts where we're, we have wounds and where we're closed off. Now, unfortunately, being human as we are, there will be some people that will be automatically turned off by us just even mentioning Medjugorje and they'll not listen to a word that you right. just said. But brothers and sisters, it's a private revelation. You can believe it or not believe it. The church right. has not totally condemned it, okay? In fact, they, have a, they made it into a shrine. Exactly. And actually the first few um, messages are already approved. Right, right. Right, and so, but you don't need to believe it. It just has helped me and it's helped right. you as well. It's helped me as well. And so, and really none of it that, that has helped us is, against church teaching and rather it is within the church teaching. Right. And, and that's how you really know in discerning uh, private revelations, are they drawing you to the fullness of the Catholic faith? If they're drawing you deeper right. into the Catholic faith, that's what they're meant to do. They're not meant to draw you to this visionary to get stuck on that or these teachings as though they're revelation outside of the church teaching, only right. if they draw you deeper into the right. church teachings or are they authentic. That's beautiful that you're saying that because a lot of people, we are going to do a video on revelations from Our Lady of uh, vis visionaries, you know, f that are uh, approved and so forth, apparitions and so forth. We will get into that at one point. But it's important that you say that though because um, some people can get just caught up in this message is doom and this message is that and this message is this and you know and you get um so wrapped up in the visionary rather than your uh, relationship with god right. and your relationship with mary right um that's what it's all about we don't need to be caught up in the doom and the gloom right. as much as we need to get caught up in a great union with god the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and with the Our Lady, because then none of that other stuff will will have any effect on us, because we'll be living um, as though, as you said, inside of time and outside of time. You know, right, it's, right. It's, well, because when we, if we live our consecration to Mary in true devotion, as Saint Louis de Montfort speaks of, then Mary's in heaven. So when we enter Mary's immaculate heart we enter a part of paradise here on earth. Right. And, and so 
there's such a grace in this. It helps us to transcend the natural realm. It's really God's kingdom here on earth. Just like Jesus said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. And truly, this is what Mary draws us to as we enter her heart, the fullness of the kingdom of God dwell mm -hmm. within her heart and the fullness of the most holy trinity. She's such so. a tender mother. And we, we want to get on to these other... I would like to, but I would like to say this. There's another question. Someone asked us, well, how, how do I grow in living daily my consecration Christian. to Mary? Yeah. And that's we a several really, questions like that. That's a yeah. really good question. And we're always trying to grow in that because it's not like we've arrived, even though we're talking about consecration to Mary. Right. But we can give you some of the things that have really helped us to grow in living our consecration to Mary. First and foremost, what I would say is fostering this a personal relationship with her. Get to know her. Get, begin exercising your spiritual senses and recognize her presence with you. I, I'll say this again, another reported message from Medjugorje that really did help me was when Mary reportedly appeared to one of the visionaries and she said, you see me and so you believe. She said, but I am just as present with anyone who calls upon me and blessed are those who do not see but believe. Of course, this is the same as what Jesus said to Thomas when he appeared and he said, Thomas, blessed are those who do not see but believe. So Mary reportedly said this same thing to the visionaries. And when I heard mm -hmm. that, that she's just as present with anyone who calls upon her. And so I started calling upon her and I started exercising my spiritual senses. And I said, well, mother, you must be here because I'm calling <laughs> upon you. And I, if I'd be driving in the car <laughs> and I would imagine her sitting next to me and yeah, I'd yeah. start talking to her and just fostering that intimacy with Mary. And of course, the church teaches that Mary has that special role, that she can be present in this way because yes. her body and soul were both assumed into heaven. Right. And so, and she was crowned to be our mother and our queen. And so when we open our hearts to her, her, her immaculate heart is living and beating among us just as Jesus is. is. And, and she is trying to help us to foster this intimacy with Jesus. And I have something to show you about that. This is show and tell again. You, you, you guys said that you really loved it whenever we showed pictures. Well, so here we go. Well, this is, if you remember that scene in Ooh. The, uh, the Passion, Passion of the Christ, and you see the hearts of Jesus and Mary. I, I've always loved this scene where Jesus yeah. and Mary or coming to, you know, Mary is going to find like where that. Jesus is. And even though they couldn't see each other, they sense each other's presence. Their hearts are sensitive to each other's hearts. And then this is the grace of the two hearts, the hearts of Jesus and Mary. That is what Mary does when we are consecrated to her. She draws us to find Jesus. Mm. You know, Amen. she draws us to go to the tabernacle, to rest our head on the tabernacle, to to be and encounter Jesus present in the Holy Eucharist. Beautiful. And so, and so, you know, when we exercise our spiritual sense, Mary's Immaculate Heart is living and beating among us. And this is why we often will see statues or pictures crying sometimes even tears of blood, because Mary is alive and in our midst as Jesus is. And Mary, her heart is feeling our pain, our suffering, right. our joys, especially right. when we invite her in, she can really be present to us as it's such a living and loving mother. And when I think of consecration to Mary too, on a daily basis, it's, it's also um, having that that trust, like you said. You know, whenever we uh, have problems or something happens, she'll she'll say, "We don't have any problems of our own. We have consecrated right. ourselves to Our Lady. They're her problems, and They're, Our Lady can can handle them way better than we can." Right. 
they become, and when we consecrate our lives to Mary, then she takes our problems as her own, and so we just have to be with her in the problems so they're no longer our burden. Right. And it helped me so yes. much whenever I would, I would, if ever I was to start thinking, you know, negative about the future or something, and you'd say, don't even go there. Don't even, right. don't even open yourself. Don't even go there. Remember, you're consecrated to Our Lady. And so this is, this is key and because so, the evil one will try right. to constantly place fear in your heart and doubt in your mind and, and all of this. And, and he wants you to engage in that. But don't even go there because look what Jesus did in the desert. When he got tempted by the evil one, he didn't even engage him in that sense. He did not engage him. Mm -hmm. It was like, do not tempt the Lord your God, mm -hmm. you know, and and he quoted scripture to him. He didn't have this, you know, rational conversation with the evil one. He quoted scripture with him. Right. And so so, so an encouragement to even like do a morning offering prayer each day of consecrating your day to the yes. sacred and immaculate hearts Heart of, of Jesus and Mary and try to live it. Not just do it up here like I give you my life, no, 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 and then go on with your day. No, you do it here and you say, Jesus and Mary, I give you my life. I place all that this day will hold into your two hearts. I'm just, you know, making a prayer up right now, but you can even write your own. But to really be able to, throughout the day, be aware of being in their hearts and that they are going to guide you and seek their inspiration. And so um, we were going to talk about the consecration. Right, but we're going to go to uh, the consecration, or you the mean Pope John Paul II? Oh, yes, it. right. All right, so some one some person asked. A if, couple of people. Why don't you say what they asked? Well, they said that the consecration, uh, the Pope did, did not do the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary as Our Lady had asked Pope John Paul at Fatima. II. So you're referring yeah. to the, this message, right? Y yes. Okay, because when we were reading, when we were mentioning a little bit about the Mary movement of priests, there again, if someone's not being inspired by these messages, you don't need to read them. But honestly, they have helped me so much. And me so much. To foster that consecration to Mary in a way that I can live it each day. Because Mary certainly, for me, has revealed her heart and her spirit to help me to recognize her right. throughout each day. And so there was a message in here that... First of all, let's just say that the Mary Movement of Priests book has had 21 imprimaturs. Right. And, and right. also, even when Father Gobi passed away in 2011, the cardinal who was part of the movement, which there's a lot of cardinals and priests and bishops who have been members. And this cardinal went and shared with Pope Benedict that Father Gobi had passed away. And Pope Benedict, he responded, <laughs> he's in heaven now. And of course, not necessarily meaning whether he knew for sure, but it just does say that he obviously had a high regard regard for, for him for father Gobi and Pope John Paul II would meet with him very often 